so pastors need to realize that if they're giving and giving and giving, there's a point where they'll give out. Sure. So they've got to refresh. What are some of the things that this, this series, Churches That Heal, or this system, how can it help pastors, whether they're the senior pastor or, or on staff, how can they be recharged? Well, well the first thing it's going to do is it's just, just going to get honest and real and do what Jesus said. Look, we're not condemning everybody for struggling. We're, we're looking to try to help, and it's going to name it. And pastor, pastors can finally say, finally, you know, guys, I, I've been needing help, and I haven't told you. I haven't felt safe to do it. And so it's going to be able to name it. Then it's going to show them how they have gotten into so many arenas because of work and other things that they're isolated. they got people around them. But as Paul said to the Corinthians, look, we opened up our hearts wide to you, but you got to be vulnerable and open up yours to us as well. They don't have the opportunity to do that a lot of times. It's going to give them a path for that. Another big area is that pastors' boundaries get overextended because everybody's needing something. And it's going to help to restore their ability to, when do I purposefully say no? To whom do I say no to? How do I do that to align with what God's called me to do? And how do I stop? You know, pastors get abused. Oh, yeah. They just get abused. And there's no Bible verse. I, I, I looked at the whole Bible. There's no verse that says, blessed are the doormats, for they shall inherit the heels. It's mm -hmm. not in there. And a lot of times, a lot of times the whole, you know, the Bible has talked about this, this, there's this whole thread of that we're supposed to, and we need to be loving and giving and forgiving and patient and forbearing. But right next to that is in all of that, you're also to set limits. And if somebody's abusing you or hurting you or controlling you, you know, the Bible is clear that we have grace and we have truth. Yes. And those have to go side by side. And I think it's going to empower a lot of them to come out of the being controlled and abused and manipulated space even by other power figures around them. And then thirdly, just to, to face the pain and the woundedness that they never face. You know, a lot of times, a lot of pastors, they come into the ministry kind of, some of them, late teen years, they start in a youth group and then college, and they're just, this ship has sailed. But they never got healed from some of the wounds that they bring into wow. ministering with. And it would be like becoming a soldier and you never got that knee worked on. And then Hebrews tells us very specifically, strengthen the arms that are feeble and the knees that are weak and the joint that is hurt so that it, 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 it great passage, it says make level paths for your feet so that the joint that is hurt will be healed rather than further injured. And a pastor is like a football player. If they got a wounded knee, they don't keep them in the game. That's right. They give them some level paths to walk on and strengthen them, and then they can go back into the game.